everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite books of 2018. Wow, 2018 was really a formative reading year for me. I have always been a reader, but this year I read 100 books, which is something I have never ever done before and it was crazy and I can't believe I read that much and I read so many amazing books. It was so, so difficult to make this list, but somehow I did. <laughs> However, I did just wanna take this time to celebrate my accomplishment and quickly list off all of the 100 books that I read in 2018 before I get into my top books of the year. And this is going to be in chronological order. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. Traitor to the Throne by Alwyn Hamilton. 1984 by George Orwell. Red Sparrow by Jason Matthews. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. Crest by Marissa Meyer. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Ferris by Marissa Meyer. Winter by Marissa Meyer. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Cruel Crown by Victoria Aveyard. Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard. A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Missoula by John Karakauer. Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. The Raven Boys, The Dream Thieves, Blue Lily, Lily Blue, and The Raven King all by Maggie Stiefvater. War Storm by Victoria Aveyard. Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab. Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. An Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, and Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. Furyborn by Claire Legrand. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. The Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. For Everyone by Jason Reynolds. Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Abertelli. Every Heart a Doorway. And Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shanann McGuire. City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. The Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Heir of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, and Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Maas. To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Always and Forever, Laura Jean by Jenny Han. Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. Strange Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. One Dark Throne by Kendar Blake. Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mouse. The Diviners by Libba Bray. City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare. City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. Lair of Dreams by Libra Bray. The Bane Chronicles and Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare. Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, and Robin Wasserman. Before the Devil Breaks You by Libra Bray. An Illustrated History of Notable Shadowhunters and Denzines of the Downworld by Cassandra Clare, illustrated by Cassandra Jean. Lady Midnight, and for the final book of the year, Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. So as you can see, it was a really, really busy reading year for me, but I just read so many series and so many books that I absolutely adored, and picking my favorites was so incredibly hard, but I'm here to bring you my top books of 2018. Coming up in spot number 10, we have Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the second installment in the Illuminae Files, which is told in dossier formats through texts, emails, IMs, and journal entries. This installment brings us to the jump station Heimdall, where we follow Hannah, the station captain's pampered daughter, and Nick Malakov, a reluctant member of a family of 
space mobsters. When the evil Bitech Corporation attacks the jump station Heimdall, Hannah and Nick must team up to defend their home, not just against the corporation, but also predatory and alien creatures and a malfunctioning wormhole that threatens to tear a rip in the time-space continuum. I absolutely adored this trilogy, but I do think that Gemina was my favorite of the three. I just love the characters of Hannah and Nick. I honestly was so hesitant to pick up this book because I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy the dossier format that it was told in, but it was actually so effective for this type of story. I think that it really elevated the storytelling to a completely new level. And the thing about this book is it just keeps you guessing at every turn. It's nonstop action, heart pounding, nervousness because you're so scared what's going to happen to these characters. It is honestly one of the most fun sci-fi series that I've read and Gemina is really at the top of its game just for all the twists and turns and crazy things that I did not see coming at all. And number nine, we have Fearyborn by Claire Legrand. There is an ancient prophecy. There will be a sun queen and a blood queen with the power to wield all seven elements. One will bring salvation to the realm and one will bring destruction. When Riel's powers are exposed, she must undergo seven trials to prove that she is the prophesied sun queen and not the blood queen. However, to Aliana, a thousand years later, the legend of Queen Riel is that just a legend. Eliana is a bounty hunter in the Undying Empire and when her mother is kidnapped she must join with the rebellion and discover the evil corruption at the heart of the Empire while also discovering some things about herself along the way. This book definitely is one of the most gripping prologues I've ever read. I was just sucked in from page one because the prologue just turns everything that you assume about this book from reading the summary right on its head right away from page one. It really really made me want to continue reading. I also found that this book was inventive and different and I think just the way that the two stories weave together is very cleverly done. I think that it can be really easy to favor one story over another when the chapters are flipping back and forth between timelines, but I found it was done in a way that kept me wanting to know what was going on in both timelines. I just thought that the stories weave together so well, even though they took place a thousand years apart. As a reader, it just kept you guessing at every single turn. I also loved Riel and Eliana as protagonists because they are definitely flawed protagonists. They are angry, quick tempered woman but they're unapologetic for it and for the power that they wield and i'm looking forward to the sequel of this coming out in 2019 Coming in at number eight is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Ju's parents were brutally murdered when she was seven by her mother's fairy general ex-husband. Whisked away to Elfheim, the fairy realms, Jude must learn to survive in a land of immortals as a mortal. She wants to earn her place in fairy, and to that she must go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the wicked Prince Cardin and learn a little bit of trickery and mischievousness of her own. Gosh, this book just keeps you guessing the entire time. When I had read it, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it because it had been getting a lot of mixed reviews and I absolutely loved it. I just loved how power hungry Jude is as a character and she's unapologetic about it. I recently did a live show for The Cruel Prince called The Cruel Read Along and I will leave a link to that above so you can check it out because we had a whole hour long discussion about this book and it was just fantastic and it made me realize how many things I absolutely adored in this novel. I liked the very literal interpretation of fairies, all of the little things Things like fairies can't tell lies, can't eat any food with salt in it, stuff like that comes into play and Jude really kind of uses those rules to manipulate her way around fairy as the only liar in a world full of deceivers. I just love that there's more than meets the eye with every single character. They are all so conniving but also so morally gray. They're never as straightforward as you think they are. You assume something about a character and then later you find out that your assumptions were completely wrong. I think every single character in the series is just shades of gray and it just makes for such an entertaining read and the plot twist in this book it will take you by surprise I was shocked reading it in spot number six we have a conjuring of light by V.E. Schwab this is the third book in the shades of magic trilogy in a darker shade of magic we follow Kel who is a blood magician known as in Intari that can travel between the four parallel worlds we have red London where Kel is from and magic is thriving gray London which is our regular schmegular at London White London, which is being consumed by its greed for magic and slowly dying, and Black London, which has been completely obliterated by magic. In Grey London, Kel encounters pickpocket Lila Bard, who steals an important magical artifact from him, one that Kel shouldn't even have. Lila forces Kel to spirit her away to Red London, and their adventure begins. This is the series that first made me fall in love with V.E. Schwab. I often say V.E. Schwab is my Slytherin queen, and this series was the beginning of that. 
I just absolutely adored this world and these characters. I think the magic system in the Shades of Magic trilogy is so like immersive and fun. I loved the concept of parallel worlds where each one has a different relation to magic, where each one has a different state of magic, and I just love the world of Red London and how cool and magical it is. Lila Bard is definitely reckless and her spirit of adventure is something that I completely admire in her. She's such a daring character that takes these risks that you don't know how it's gonna turn out, but it's always dazzling to watch. I also love that in this third book, this is really where things are coming together. The stakes are so high, and I just find that V.E. Schwab can really turn your opinion on a character. There's a character in this book that I did not like in the first two books and I completely changed my mind on him by the end of this book because of the way that she is able to craft a story and a redemption arc for characters where there's more that meets the eye, there's more going on underneath the surface and I just completely adored that about this book and I just thought that this was an amazing conclusion to the series and really just everything came together really well and wrapped up really really amazingly and it just left me breathless with how amazing it is. At number six, we have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Six of Crows takes place in the Grishaverse, this time in Ketterdam, a bustling hub of international trade. We follow Cas Brecker, a criminal prodigy who is offered the sum of a lifetime to pull off an impossible heist. He assembles a team of outcasts for the job. In Crooked Kingdom, we follow the repercussions of this heist and the impact on the Grishaverse at large. The characters are truly what makes this series shine. They are also so unique but they all have their own inner struggles. I loved how in Six of Crows their backstories were interwoven with the present timeline and we really got to learn more about why each character is the way that they are and all of their inner demons that they are dealing with which still comes into play in Crooked Kingdom. You can really feel their inner struggle throughout this whole series and especially in Crooked Kingdom where they confront the things that have been plaguing them and there are some really poignant moments as they come face to face with what haunts them. I also just love how morally Greg has Brecker is. He's a criminal prodigy and he's conniving the way that he manipulates the situation to most benefit him and yet the way that he cares about his team is just amazing and the action in this book is non-stop. It was heart pounding and it was heartbreaking at times and this book left me in pieces and I just absolutely loved it for it. And again, Lee Bardugo is a master at world building. Ketterdam is like no other fantasy world that I've ever seen, and I'm so excited to return to the Grishaverse in 2019 with King of Scars. At spot number five, we have Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, which is the second book in the Dark Artifices trilogy. This trilogy follows five years after the events of City of Heavenly Fire and follows the Blackthorn family that runs the Los Angeles Institute along with Emma Carstairs. When bodies of murdered humans and fairies are showing up all over Los Angeles, similar to the way that Emma's parents were brutally murdered five years ago, Emma and the Blackthorns must find and catch the murderer for a chance at revenge and a chance at a united family. This book <laughs> has one of the most devastating endings ever. It is really so sad, but the thing that makes me fall in love with this series is the Blackthorn family and their dynamics. Each character has such a distinct voice and just seeing the way that this family loves each other is really heartwarming to me, along with having a lot of good representation in the Shadowhunter world. And I feel like Cassandra Clare is just doing a really good job of building that representation in seamlessly into her books. It's not something that is you know, made a big deal, but it's something that is just there. Like, it is in the real world. I also think that the politics play a huge role in this book, along with the repercussions of the cold peace, in which the protection of the Shadowhunters for fairies was revoked at the end of the Dark War. Fairies are basically used as an allegory for racism and discrimination in our world, and I think that fantasy is such a good lens through which to view modern political problems because it removes people's preconceived notions, because fairies are not something that exist in our world and that people are normally prejudiced towards so you can kind of see how these prejudices play against this group of people in this book while removing yourself kind of from like today's political realities. And I think that fantasy can be a really good tool to make comments on what is happening in the real world. But another thing that I love about the series is just like the relationships between everyone, the romances, the multiple romances in this series are so good and so real and just filled with heart-wrenching emotion and it just pulls at the heartstrings and this book 
it just makes me feel so, so many emotions. At spot number four, we have Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. And this is the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. In Throne of Glass, we follow Selena Sardothian, who is the Empire's most ruthless assassin. However, she's fresh off a stint as a slave for a year in the salt mines of Endovir after she was caught. She is brought to the capital in order to compete in a tournament to be the king's champion, the official assassin of Ardalan. However, when the contestants start dying off one by one, Selena learns that there are darker forces at work in the castle. I read the entire Thorn of Glass series this year and the reason that I chose Queen of Shadows in this spot as my favorite is because I feel like this is the point when the book really becomes a high fantasy. All of these different players and characters are in motion and things really just start to pick up pace. This series is just so immersive with so many different elements, so many different things going on and I absolutely love it and I just love that we have this badass female protagonist as the center point for a high fantasy series and it's something that I felt like I have never really read before and because of that it means so much to me. I read all these books that were available at the time so from the Assassin's Blade to Tower of Dawn in two weeks and did a reading vlog on it and I just loved zooming through the series because I just could not get enough of it. I needed to know what was going to happen. I feel like the main character really hid a lot of herself in the earlier books and Queen of Shadows is when we really get to see who she is as a character and it's just so impactful and powerful. And her personality, even though I don't think I'm similar to her, I just relate to a lot of the things that she goes through and a lot of her struggles and it just makes me absolutely adore the Throne of Glass series and I'm so so glad that I read it this year. Coming in at number three, we have Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is set in the Shadowhunters world in, in the 1870s London. We follow Tessa Gray who upon arriving in England is kidnapped by the mysterious dark sisters and learns she has a secret power to transform into anyone. When she is rescued by two mysterious shadow hunter boys, Will and Jem, who she's inexplicably drawn to, they must uncover the dark secrets of her past in order to stop a foe in the present. This is the third book in the series and it was an absolutely stunning conclusion. This book literally made me feel so many things and I will still think about the epilogue and literally not be okay. <sighs> like, oh my god. <laughs> I just loved having this whole Shadowhunters world, which is originally a story told in present day, brought back into the 1800s and just the history of the world just built up that much more. And the characters of Tessa, Will, and Jem just touched me in such a way. Tessa is one of my favorite characters ever. I just think she has this quiet strength about her. She's not proficient in fighting and she's not, you know, out badass in that like outright fighting way, but she fights for herself because she's so clever, but she also has this quiet strength about her. She is so smart and just uses those things in these tricky situations that they get themselves into. This is really like, the most well done love triangle I have ever read in my life. I felt like it was not a hindrance to the story, but yet it was an essential part of the story because Will and Jem and Tessa all love each other so much and there's so much mutual understanding and respect between them that it really just made for a great love story. And there's just such depth to all these characters. They're so well-rounded and just everything that happens is heart-wrenching. And like I said, this epilogue will shatter your heart to pieces and mend it back up in the span of like 20 pages and I don't know how she does it but oh man it was just so so incredible and I can't believe when I was younger I read Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince and I never read Clockwork Princess I don't know how I could have done that because this book was just everything to me. Coming in at number two we have two books because I couldn't pick between them Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor so yeah I cheated a little bit and I'm putting two books in the number two spot but I just find that the story flows from one into the other and they're just one big story together. In Strange the Dreamer, we follow Laszlo Strange, a librarian who spent his whole life obsessed with the mythic city of Weep. His life is completely changed when a convoy comes to the city of Zosma and offers him a chance of a lifetime to travel to the city of Weep and unveil the mysteries of the unseen city. So many people have said that they don't want to give in-depth explanations of Strange the Dreamer because you just kind of need to go into it only knowing that and just uncovering this beautiful story as it occurs and I completely agree. It is just the most magical and lyrical book I have ever read in my entire life. The writing just left me speechless. It was ethereal. It was such 
the way the story unfolds, the pacing, it's just so magical. I actually felt like reading this book was like being in a dream, which is appropriate because it's a strange dreamer. And I love that the world building just went down to the really subtle details and it just makes for such a great story. I believe Books with Chloe said that this book is a Ravenclaw and she's totally right. It is just intelligent and beautiful and just everything that I completely love. In Muse of Nightmares, the world building escalated to a scale that I did not even know that I needed and it was truly mind boggling. We also follow a separate storyline of sisters Cora and Nova, which is one of my favorite additions to this world because their story was just heartbreaking. Seeing all these mysteries that were weaved in Stranger Dreamer come together in this book was really a sight to behold because it was just wild and crazy in ways that I did not even imagine that it could be. I also loved the character development. In Stranger Dreamer, we really developed Lazo Strange's character, but in this book, we learn more about Thion Nero and Sarai and Minya and all these other characters, and there are just so many beautiful, poignant moments between them. I just love Lazo because of how sensitive and emotional he is, and we just need more soft boys in literature. The thing about this book is her prose is just so lyrical and magical, and reading this book is like having magic in the world. That's the only way that I can describe it because I just absolutely adored everything about this duology. Now, if you've seen my collaborative project, Booktube's favorite books of 2018, you will probably already know it's in my number one spot because I talked about it there, but I will talk about it again because I adore this book. And that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. And this is the second book in A Court of Thorns and Roses series. In the first book, we follow Feyre, must support her poor family by being a huntress. When she accidentally kills a wolf disguised as a fairy, she's whisked away by a fairy lord to the land of Corinthian to be his captive in a life of luxury. Feyre learns of a curse that is upon the fairy lands, and as she comes to care for the fairies, she races for a way to stop the curse. This book almost took on a different tone from the first book, and there were some problematic things in the first book that are addressed in this book and it makes a lot of sense. I just thought that this book did such a beautiful job dealing with emotional trauma and PTSD, depression, all those things because the stuff that Feyre goes through in A Court of Thorns and Roses would be traumatic to everyone and I feel like in fantasy so many times characters are going through such traumatic things and things that would make anyone have PTSD, depression, shock and it's never dealt with they're just assumed because they're in fantasy they're you know just go along with their lives and this is just the way that things are but to Feyre these things really broke her and it's just the journey of her healing and her realizing how powerful she is and starting to believe in herself and I just find that it was so beautiful and the thing that really made me realize that this was my favorite book of the year is I will go back and read my favorite parts and just think about how much I love these characters, how much I love this book. And to me, that means that the story really stuck with me and really meant a lot to me. All right, that's it for all the books I read in 2018 and my top 10 books of 2018. What a year it's been. I am so excited to see what 2019 has in store for me. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,